Hello. Well, I do a lot of videos about audio and video technology, and indeed my next one will probably be uh, working on a Philips N1700. But I came across something today, and I wanted to share this with you because it's really rather special, to me anyway, that when I was a student, back in around 1986, something like that, I uh, had a final year project in my HND, Electrical Electronic Engineering, uh, with uh, Plymouth Polytechnic as it was then, it's now a university, and I was quite lucky. I had an oscilloscope of my own, so I had a little bit more time. I was able to do a slightly more sophisticated project than some people were able to just at the labs in the, in the class. And uh, I built a frequency counter entirely out of TTL chips, uh, a six and a half digit frequency counter, and it worked. I was very proud of that, and I've just come across it. Oh, we've got to have a play with this, haven't we? So this has been uh, sat in this box for the most of the past 35 years or so, and it's built using uh, wire wrap. So it's like wire, no, it's wire pen, like wire wrap, but instead of having long pins that you wrap a wire around, um, this has normal components and you wrap enameled wire around it, the, those pins, and solder through the uh, enamel. So you burn off the enamel with your soldering iron. So it got through quite a lot of solder. Um, and then run your wires through these channels, these plastic guides. And so it's capable of very high density. So I built quite a lot of electronics on a very small board. Now from what I remember, I remember asking the uh, my lecturer, I said, oh, I've got a, a panel which has some driver electronics and a display on it. Can I recycle that instead of having to rebuild all that and then just build the um, frequency counter uh, myself? And he said, yes, that's okay, provided, of course, you're building a great deal more than you're using, and I clearly did. Uh, now this is a display which displayed frequencies on a, I think it was a level measuring rig for Vantel and Goltemann, SPM30 I think it was. Uh, and in fact I may have the diagrams here. Well, that's the diagram for, that's it, this is the diagram from Vantel and Goltemann. So that's a display driver and all it did was take in uh, BCD I think and also of course displays LCDs have to be driven with approximately 50 Hertz or so square wave to oscillate the, uh, the, the, the digits to switch them on and off. If you don't do that you burn them in. So uh, I think I picked up 48 Hertz I seem to remember from the divider chain uh, which I'll come to in a minute. So um, that's electronics that I borrowed and it just has some headers here and some gorgeous rainbow cable connecting it to headers on my board. So here's the diagram for my frequency counter, which is a photocopy and it's not crystal clear. There's a few lines I can't quite see where they go, but hopefully I can work out how to use it. Ah, yes tell you what I'll do is I'll scan this in and I'll uh, show it to you on the screen. So it says letters refer to preset input. So what that's about, the sort of phase two of this was to have the option of putting in a frequency uh, value so you could do an offset and use this to measure a uh, frequency in uh, a radio. So it would offset by the, by the IF. I never implemented that, it was hard enough building this much. So I used ICs, uh, counter ICs, that would allow you to preset them. So that possibly made the, uh, the circuit slightly more expensive than it needed to be, because there were the more expensive or, or bigger chips involved in the counting. So uh, what does it do? Of course, it's all coming back to me now. So I think there was a, there's a watch crystal oscillator here. And so that oscillates at 32.768 kilohertz. There's a trimmer there. And uh, there's a link there. And what you could do, I could 
there was a way, and I forget how, there was a way of configuring it so those pulses could be counted directly on the display. So you could count, um, say, a day's worth of seconds and confirm that you had the correct amount of seconds on there and, if necessary, tweak the uh, trimmer on the crystal oscillator circuit. So that was a way of making sure it was supremely accurate. So then this would be divided down by the 7493 ICs down to a 1 hertz pulse. I think that was also displayed on here. I think that LED displays that. And then there was an input signal, which I'm pretty sure is this is marked in. I didn't have much in the way of fancy buffer circuits. It takes a TTL input. So there was some space here for building a, a preamplifier, which uh, I didn't. Um, and then... Um, some gating and oh what else what else uh, frequency doubler oh I think what it did was you could choose to count if you're building a frequency counter it could count on negative going edges or positive going edges but this counted on both so yes that's right it created needle pulses from the negative and positive going uh, slopes on the input signal um, and I seem to remember that it went pretty much up to the maximum frequency you could drive to get TTL to work at. So very, very short needle pulses. And then that would feed these counters, which would be gated open for, I think, half a second. I think that's the way I did it. Something like that. Now, no point criticising whether I could have done it better. I did it the way I did it back in 1985 or 1986. Something like that. Let's... Uh, see if we can make it work. Should we uh, set you up so you can look down on this and get a closer look? Okay, um, let's uh, power it up with 5 volts. Okay, it's powered up with 5 volts. It's taking about half an amp, which is probably part of the course given the vintage of the technology. Right, so we have uh, the uh, gate signal here so I believe when it's green it's counting I think that's where it works and so here's our input but we haven't got a signal um, and I don't have a frequency uh, generator to hand nothing they can give out um, TTL compatible let's see how I can work around that well one thing I can do is of course we've got this divider chain so I could for example look at the one hertz pulses that are here that's looking good isn't it so this is reading in kilohertz so we could go right up to maybe not 32 kilohertz because that would load the um, oscillator. Well, I could try, but I don't think I can read that one. No, that loaded the oscillator too much. But uh, I should be able to go from where that's divided down. So looking at the diagram, I think the, I should be able to pick that up at Pin one of the first IC. Let's have a go. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's half of 32768. Of course, these are going to be locked nicely uh, because it's the same system generating these frequencies as is measuring them. So really, we want to have a look at uh, with an external source to get some more interesting results. Let's see what I can find. Okay, I've rigged up a really ugly 555 timer circuit here with no capacitor. So it should run pretty much at top frequency, which would be in the order of about megahertz. That depends slightly on what resistor values I choose, but I think I should get about megahertz out of that. I'll measure this on, I've got an oscilloscope, but I'll measure it here just on this so we can see it on the screen. Okay, so that's giving me 892 megahertz. That says 0.8, no, that's better. 0.892 megahertz. It seems reasonably stable, actually. So let's see what happens when I connect that to my frequency counter. It's a little bit random, isn't it? I was hoping for better than that. I 
bouncing around and every so often it goes completely crazy. And considering this is a six and a half digit frequency counter that can measure up to around about two megahertz, uh, it's not doing a great job at all, is it? Why do you think that is? Maybe the waveform's too ugly. Let's try a different 555. See what that measures. Much lower frequency and a good deal more stable. Let's see if the multimeter agrees. Yes, they're both reading 245 now. So I'm reasonably confident that the frequency counter is working, and I know it can work to much higher frequencies than this, but clearly that waveform was a bit noisy or something about it it didn't like. But that's working fairly well, actually, isn't it? So just taking a look at the um, solder side of the PCB, yeah, it's not as pretty as all that, but the density is, you know, really incredible. You get a, a lot of circuitry onto a small board like this. So uh, I don't think I could have built it with any other kind of uh, technology that would have uh, allowed me to get so much uh, circuitry onto such a small board. And uh, a quick look there at the uh, crystal oscillator. So that is using a, a watch crystal. I do seem to remember that it wasn't 100% reliable and occasionally it wouldn't start up properly. Um, but uh, it's certainly been working okay today. And then this is the board that came from the uh, Vantel and Goltelman machine. Well, I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this uh, wonderful old piece of electronics from some 35 years ago. Um, I, of course, will be getting back to doing a lot more on audio and video technology in particular, so do please remember to like, share and especially subscribe. Bye for now.